in any oil facility, gas plant, chemical, petrochemical plant, pressure safety valves, PSVs, play a crucial role. Pressure safety valves prevent damage and ensure the safe operation of plant components such as equipment or piping etc. While their function might seem simple, their selection, sizing, and operation involve a myriad of factors that require careful consideration. When we talk about PSVs, we are generally talking about the last layer of protection of equipment against overpressure, a condition that could potentially lead to catastrophic failure of equipment or piping systems. At their core, pressure safety valves serve as a final defense against overpressure. If you'd like to dive in deep in equipment protection from overpressure, check our P&ID course. The working principle of PSVs is relatively straightforward. Under normal operating conditions, the valve remains closed, maintaining system pressure. However, when the pressure inside the equipment or vessel exceeds a preset threshold, the valve rapidly opens to release the excess pressure. This rapid opening is achieved through various mechanisms, including springs, bellows, or pilot-operated systems. The choice of mechanism depends on the specific application and performance requirements. We shall talk about each of these when getting to PSV types. Upon activation, the PSV creates an escape path for the pressurized fluid, allowing it to discharge safely until the pressure drops to an acceptable level. Once the pressure is reduced, the valve reseats, closing the escape path and returning the system to its normal operating state. So here, we see that a PSV works to relieve the overpressure. But here come several important questions. What is the source of overpressure? How overpressure shall happen? How can we estimate the expected flow to be released in order to return the pressure to its normal operating range? These questions are so important as they shall highly affect the sizing of the PSV. If we are considering that the source of overpressure is just some thermal expansion in the pipe, this shall mean that only a tiny flow needs to be relieved in order to avoid overpressure, which means that we can choose a small PSV in this case. However, if the expected scenario is a total blockage in the line, then this tiny PSV won't be able to relieve this huge flow, and overpressure would happen in this case. So we shall need much larger PSV in this case. When it comes to sizing pressure safety valves, several scenarios must be considered. Each scenario represents a different potential cause of overpressure, requiring unique considerations for PSV sizing. Fire scenario is one of the most common scenarios that are considered in a vessel. Depending on the layout of the equipment, a pool fire or jet fire scenario may be considered. In a pool fire, accumulated hydrocarbons on the ground or other surfaces ignite, heating the equipment. In a jet fire, a high-pressure gas leak ignites, creating a highly directional flame. In the event of an external fire, Liquid inside the vessel is subject to vaporization, which shall lead the pressure within a vessel to increase dramatically. So here, we shall need to ensure that a pressure safety valve is installed to release this pressure. A blocked outlet scenario arises when a block valve inadvertently closes or a control valve fails in the closed position on an outlet line. In this case, if the piping or equipment to be protected are not designed to withstand the high pressure from the source, for example in the case of positive displacement pump discharge, the PSV must be sized to handle the total inlet flow of the pump. Control valves play a key role in regulating flow within a system. However, control valves are always prone to failure, whether it's due to instrument air failure or due to mechanical failure where the stem gets stuck in the open or closed position. Failing or getting stuck in the closed position should be addressed by studying the applicability of blockage scenario. However, a control valve can also be a source of overpressure if they fail in the open position, leading to an uncontrolled increase in flow rate. 
One of the common examples here is the gas blow by case. For example, we can see in this system that there is a level control on V01. If the level in V01 starts to decrease, the control valve shall throttle in order to retain the liquid level in V01. However, what shall be the case if the control valve failed in the open position? Or what if the level controller failed? What if LT01 gave some false readings? In all the above scenarios, this may lead to liquid getting evacuated from V01. If all the liquid was evacuated, gas shall start to go through to VO2. This means that VO2 which is designed to handle 3 bar, shall be vulnerable to a pressure of 35 bar, which shall lead to overpressure in the system and catastrophic failure. So, in case of control valve failure or gas blow by case, we should size the PSV based on the maximum flow rate a valve shall pass which commonly represents its rated CV. If you'd like to have a deeper understanding of control valve characteristics and CV, you can check out our control valve course. A failure in the coolant system, such as a pump failure or loss of makeup water, can cause an increase in temperature and pressure within a system. This requires the PSV to handle the excess heat and pressure generated. So based on the applicable overpressure scenarios, we shall choose the maximum relief load in order to size the PSV. Based on the highest relief load, we shall choose the PSV orifice area that ensures that the relief load can pass smoothly to the flare system. If the PSV has a small orifice area, pressure shall still accumulate in the upstream system, and system shall be prone to failure. Another important factor that affects the sizing of a pressure safety valve is the back pressure it faces. When a PSV opens to relieve overpressure, back pressure in a PSV can either be superimposed or built up. Superimposed back pressure exists before the PSV opens and can be constant or variable. Built up, back pressure develops due to the flow of fluids through the PSV when it opens. Both forms of back pressure can affect the operation of the PSV and must be considered in its sizing. So, what are the common PSV types? As the oldest and most common type of PSV, conventional valves are versatile and reliable if properly sized and operated. However, their performance can be negatively impacted by excessive back pressure. That's why they are commonly used when the flare back pressure is negligible. Balanced bellows PSVs are designed to handle higher built-up back pressure and protect the valve's spring from corrosion. However, the bellows can be susceptible to fatigue and rupture, leading to potential leaks. Balanced bellows valves are used when the flare back pressure is more than 20 to 30 percent of the PSV set pressure. Pilot-operated PSVs are controlled by process pressure rather than a spring, which allows them to operate at up to 98% of the set pressure. They are less susceptible to chattering, rapid opening and closing, but the pilot control can potentially plug, limiting their use in fouling services. Pilot valves are used when the PSV downstream system back pressure is too close to the PSV set pressure. The sizing of pressure safety valves involves a detailed procedure that takes into account the various relief scenarios, the properties of the fluid being relieved, and the operating conditions of the system. The process generally involves these steps. The first step is to evaluate the applicable relief scenarios and potential causes of overpressure. So after we determined the overpressure scenarios, we shall calculate the required relief area for each scenario, then we shall choose the governing case yielding the highest orifice area. Based on the governing case, we shall choose the required orifice and valve body size, following the guidelines in API 526. After calculating the PSV size, it's time to calculate the inlet line size. API 520 dictates that the pressure drop is less than 3% of the relieving pressure, set pressure. After calculating the PSV inlet pipe size, 
we shall perform a preliminary estimate of the PSV tailpipe, or in other words, outlet pipe size. In a later stage, we shall need to perform a flare system modeling using software like Aspen Flare Analyzer to determine the total back pressure and the most suitable tailpipe size. The back pressure of the flare system against the PSV should be within the acceptable limits of the chosen PSV type. Otherwise, we may need to change the PSV type if there are no other solutions to reduce the back pressure. In conclusion, Pressure safety valves are critical components in any industrial setup involving pressure systems. Their correct sizing and selection is essential for preventing overpressure scenarios that could potentially lead to equipment failure and hazardous situations. By considering various relief scenarios, applying appropriate codes and standards, and carefully calculating the required relief area, we can ensure that our system is protected from overpressure.